Thanks for tuning in this week. During my last video, I took the opportunity to talk a little bit about Tezos's past, present, and future. I spoke of the original design of Tezos and how it differs from other cryptocurrencies, its self emitting ledger, its monitor architecture, its unique ability to avoid far reaching, sweeping changes and instead allow for smart, pragmatic, incremental improvements over time. And it's why Tezos has upgraded more quickly and seamlessly than any other blockchain in existence in the last three years. I covered the latest exciting developments, becoming the official blockchain for one of a platform that will feature NFTs from some of the top artists in the world, um, and, and there will be more to come. Uh, th then there's Red Bull Racing, uh, who chose Tezos as the team's official blockchain to build its first ever NFT fan experience. And more recently, um, as you may have heard, Tezos was selected by McLaren uh, for a multi-year technical partnership across Formula One, IndyCar, and eSports. So, We've covered what Tezos is, uh, what we've accomplished, where we're going, but with these new and exciting developments in music, entertainment, and sports, um, and with Tezos surpassing 2 million contract calls in the month of June, it's never been more important to not become a victim to our own success. We need to focus on scalability immediately. And here I think uh, it's helpful to step back a bit. For those who are new to Tezos or new to the cryptocurrency world in general, Let's address what scalability is and how essential it is to the success of any blockchain. So, put simply, scalability is the ability of a system to respond to growing demand by itself growing. And in the case of a blockchain, it means adapting to process an increasing amount of transactions over time. Uh, the goal of scaling is to increase the number of people who can use a Tezos chain, the number of transactions they can do, and the amount of smart contracts they can use. So scaling is not the end game, but it is the way Tezos reaches more people around the world and harnesses its full potential. So how do we get there? There are generally two avenues for scalability. One is vertical scaling, and the other, horizontal scaling. Scaling vertically means adding more power to validators. This typically implies requiring the use of computers with more RAM, more CPU, uh, faster internet connection to validate the chain. The upside of vertical scaling is its simplicity. The same software architecture can be reused. And, and sure, many parts of the algorithm uh, may need to be tweaked to handle this higher throughput, but overall, the more high-end the computer used to validate the chain, the higher the throughput. Uh, specifically, applications immediately get faster while continuing to operate in the same environment. The downsides of vertical scaling are centralization and a fairly low limit to the throughput it can unlock. The fastest CPU money can buy is barely maybe 10 times faster than an entry-level CPU in single-threaded performance. Multiplying cores can help, but that's in fact a light form of horizontal scaling which carries with it some complexity in application interaction and negates some of the simplicity inherent in vertical scaling. So scaling vertically increases the cost of participating in the chain, which means fewer people can do so, and that can bring about centralization. Decentralization can make it easier to corrupt the chain without people noticing or to censor transactions. The censorship resistance and security of the chain rests on the assumption of an honest majority securing the chain. Simply put, the smaller the pool of participants, the higher the risk. The other avenue is horizontal scaling, and this involves increasing throughput by adding more nodes to the network. Instead of requiring participants to run faster computers, the more computers participate, the higher the throughput of the chain. Ultimately, scaling is achieved when each additional baker increases the amount of transactions and computations that can be handled on the chain. Now that bridges decentralization, because the higher the demand for transactions, the higher the fees, the more computers are incentivized to join the network. In the context of proof-of-stake, the larger the stake, the more power one must contribute, which removes some of the economies of scale that large bakers currently enjoy. Horizontal scaling has potential that far exceeds what can be achieved by scaling vertically. 
Here's the downside. The horizontal scaling approach invariably creates a crossable but inconvenient border between economic clusters on the chain. Well, the ease of transacting or deploying smart contracts that interact with each other is preserved within a cluster. Interaction between clusters is a lot more cumbersome and it introduces latency. So with vertical and horizontal scaling in mind, I want to propose a scaling strategy for Tezos, which shares the best part of both horizontal and vertical scaling with essentially none of the centralization risks. And the key to understanding this strategy is to first decompose the tasks that bakers currently perform on a Tezos network. Broadly speaking, bakers do three main things. Number one is validation. Bakers verify that the transactions public on a chain are valid. Number two is collation. Bakers collect transactions, order them, and publish them into a block. Number three is data viability. They propagate blocks and keep a record of them along with the state of the ledger so that other network participants can synchronize their node and join the network. Let's turn our focus to the first and second responsibilities, validation and collation. Validators and collators order transactions into blocks, but also execute them and verify they're correct. At first glance, many people tend to assume the former is simple and straightforward, while the latter is complicated and requires a great deal of attention. But actually, the opposite is true. Validation is the easier challenge. It requires the least amount of assumptions or reliance on virtuous human behavior. Computing the outcome of these transactions, asserting their validity sounds much more complicated. But these can be done assuming a single honest party or with no trust assumption at all using cryptographic techniques. Ordering transaction into blocks is different. That goes to the heart of censorship resistance and decentralization. This is the part that requires strong and messy human assumption, such as the presence of an honest majority. So with validation being the simpler issue to address, let's begin there. In 2017, I described an alternative to sharding uh, which led to a technique that now goes by the name of ZK rollups. They have been complemented recently by another technique known as optimistic rollups. In a rollup, batches of transactions attached to a specific rollup are posted on a blockchain, but they are not executed. They're ordered into uh, blocks by bakers, and their data is made available by being published on the chain, but bakers do not attempt to verify that those batches are correct. The bakers only concern themselves with whether the batch being submitted paid them a transaction fee for its inclusion in the block or not. Meanwhile, rollup validators execute all the batches of transactions attached to the specific rollup they are validating in the order in which they appear on the chain. If a transaction is invalid, they just skip it. Anyone can post a batch of transactions for a rollup on a chain and anyone can run a validator for a rollup. Now, not all rollups out there are built this way, by the way. Um, some have permissions for who is allowed to post transactions, and as a result, they lose a lot of the good property that I will describe. So at, at, at any time, um, validators can make assertions about the state of the rollup and post these assertions on the chain. Two mechanisms can be used to prove that the assertion is correct. The first, is a zero-knowledge proof. This is a very, very small cryptographic proof, which can be verified in a fraction of a second by bakers, and it proves that the state of the rollup is valid after a long series of transactions. This very short cryptographic proof can summarize an almost arbitrary large amount of transactions, computation, and verification by the validators. That's called a ZK rollup. The second is a game theoretic mechanism. The validator places a stake when making the assertion. Now, the assertion can be challenged, and through a series of challenges and responses, the dispute can boil down to the execution of a single transaction, which can be re-executed on chain to adjudicate. The winner of the dispute gets the stakes. That's known as an optimistic rollup. 
In principle, um, DK rollups are superior to optimistic rollups because of the guarantees that they bring. However, uh, they do suffer from a very important performance drawback. Generating the required proofs takes several orders of magnitude more time than just executing the transactions themselves. And this is especially true if the transactions involve complicated smart contract interactions uh, as opposed to simple transfers. And this makes optimistic rollups way more amenable to very high throughputs and smart contract usage. It's very important to understand that the trust assumptions with respect to rollup validators are minimal. In the case of a ZK rollup, there are essentially none. Every baker can be instantly convinced that all the validation done to that point is correct. Bakers can focus solely on the task of maintaining consensus and providing a censorship resistant chain, while it takes a single party to validate the rollup and post assertions. In the case of an optimistic rollup, it takes a single honest party to call out false assertions. This is a far cry from the much stronger honest majority requirement for consensus. This means that rollups allow vertical scaling while preserving decentralization. If the requirement to run a baker were a blazing fast computer, decentralization would suffer because very few people could run a baker and verify the correctness of the chain. But if the hardware requirements to run a rollup validator are extremely high, this has no bearing on censorship resistance or on consensus because we only need a single honest party running such a, such a validator, not, not the majority. So a highly decentralized network that ensures the security of the consensus and the censorship resistance of the ledger married with a trustless mechanism to actually process the transactions. Rollup offers benefits of vertical scaling without the risk of centralization. But rollups also offer horizontal scaling. Indeed, different rollups can have different validators executing the transactions from a rollup of interest and posting assertions on the chain. Communication between rollups, such as um, asset transfer, they happen via the main chain and they introduce latency. And this can make cross rollup interactions difficult, um, require a two phase commit approaches for smart contract interplay. And that's sometimes used to argue against uh, horizontal scaling in favor of vertical scaling. But as we've seen, using rollups does not preclude vertical scaling at all. In fact, it makes it much more censorship resistant than the naive approach of scaling the computational demands on consensus participants themselves. So now that we've covered validation and collation, we need to address data availability. And that means we need to discuss sharding bandwidths. Rollups split both computational requirements and state storage requirements between different actors, achieving horizontal scaling. However, one bottleneck remains. Bakers are still required to download every single batch of transaction from every single rollup. To be sure, bandwidth is currently far less of a limiting factor than CPU. Uh, with some compression, 100,000 transactions per second can be downloaded with access to modest broadband. Nonetheless, we should seek to remove this bottleneck. And thankfully, it is possible. To do so, Tezos can deploy a simple but reasonably effective approach, or Tezos can use a more advanced cryptographic technique with more overhead but stronger guarantees. Let's first dive into the simple strategy. When bakers download blocks on Tezos, they really download a header and a set of associated transactions that the header points to. There is no big binary blog uh, representing the block that is downloaded. Currently, honest bakers are required to download the entire content of a block before accepting it. We can loosen these rules and require that um, the endorsers of a block, only the endorsers of a block download rollup or a random subset of the rollup. So the endorser would then confirm which batches of rollup transactions they have successfully downloaded. And if there is no indication that a batch was successfully downloaded with enough validators, then it's just treated as a no-op for the rollup. This strategy, which is sometimes dubbed as um, availability committee, has the benefits of being straightforward. But it suffers from an adaptive corruptibility issue. If we assume 
that bakers have a majority that is unconditionally honest, then with high probability, samples from it can also have an unconditionally honest majority. However, one could try to bribe the data availability committee for a given roll-up, which might represent a small amount of stake and renders it unavailable, although this, may be, this misbehavior would be immediately obvious to chain participants. So to that end, we often prefer the weaker assumption that while honest actors are not unconditionally honest, the cost of bribery is at least commensurate with the amount of stake being bribed. So a more advanced strategy, um, championed in particular by Stu, is to have data availability committees not for individual roll-up transaction batches, but for pieces of data from error-encoded batches. So think of each roll-up transaction batch as a pitcher. In a simple strategy, we ask endorsers to make a copy of a small random subset of pitchers. In the advanced strategy, we turn each pitcher into a hologram, break it into small pieces, and have endorsers download a few pieces from each hologram. So um, in putting all this together, we cover the three main functions of bakers that must be scaled, validation, collation, and net availability. I talked about vertical and horizontal scaling and how rollups can provide a solution to both. And finally, I moved beyond basic rollup to highlight charting bandwidths and the simple and advanced strategies that can be deployed to remove the bottlenecks. To achieve strong, pragmatic scalability, I believe Tezos should begin with both optimistic and decay rollups. Not only do rollups offer a way to scale by splitting the validation efforts, they also allow the execution of transactions to be done by powerful hardware without requiring the bakers themselves to run such hardware. Rollups bring the benefits of both on-chain scaling and L2 scaling at the same time. What's more, rollups provide an incremental way to scale. They are a natural addition to the main chain and they can gradually reduce its load. When bandwidth becomes a limiting factor, various techniques can be used by asking bakers to download only a fraction of the rollup data. This creates a virtuous cycle. The more demand for transactions there is, the more attractive it becomes to bake, the more decentralized the chain becomes, the more transactions Tezos can process. And when bandwidth becomes a limiting factor, we can introduce rollups that rely on um, simple data availability committees. Depending on a trust assumption that um, users are comfortable with and the type of application, either the main chain, a rollup with full data availability, or a rollup with a data availability committee can be used. Finally, in time, introduce rollups relying on a more advanced strategy for data availability. All in all, this is an incremental scaling strategy for Tezos. We do not need to implement far reaching sweeping changes. Instead, Tezos was designed to look for this kind of smart, pragmatic, gradual improvements over time. So, as we celebrate the third anniversary of Tezos, it's important to remember how far this project has come. All that we accomplished by working together. We are pioneers of proof of stake. Six upgrades, over 55 million transactions, seven straight months of broken records for contract calls, and over 200,000 NFTs minted on Tezos. And we are just getting started. But as I said before, Tezos cannot afford to become a victim of success. Now, arguably more than ever, the future of Tezos lies in the hands of where it was designed to be from the very beginning, the hands of its global community. Whether you are a baker or new to the Tezos ecosystem, we need you. We need your ideas, your inputs, and your collaboration. Working together, we can draw on Tezos' past accomplishments, continue to build upon the incredible momentum of the past four months, and ensure that millions of people around the world can experience the most advanced blockchain in the world. Thank you again for watching and keep an eye out for another video soon to come. And don't forget to click like and subscribe. Thank you very much.